EBITDA is earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortisation. It's important to highlight that the interest referred to is both interest income and interest expense. With that said, how is EBITDA calculated in simple terms? The best way to calculate EBITDA is to look at a company's profit and loss, which will be a page included in its financial statements. On the profit and loss page, you should be able to find the profit before tax number, which is your starting point. Then identify any interest income on the profit and loss and deduct this amount from the profit before tax amount. Then identify any interest expense on the profit and loss and add this amount back to the profit before tax figure. Finally, turn to the page in the financial statements which discloses depreciation and amortization, which may be on the face of the profit and loss depending on the detail included on this report, and add back both depreciation and amortization to the profit figure. This adjusted profit before tax figure will be EBITDA. Many argue that EBITDA is flawed, so let's take a look at this question. There are many people, including many business brokers, who use EBITDA as a metric to value a business, which to others, including myself and Warren Buffett, makes no sense. The reason this makes no sense is because depreciation and amortization are expenses of the business, especially depreciation. Depreciation is a cost of the profit and loss and a deduction that is calculated so as to charge a percentage of a company's asset usage in the business. Depreciation is normally calculated on the basis of an asset's useful life. If you like, it makes sense to consider depreciation akin to setting aside an amount each month or year sufficient to replace the asset in the future which means if depreciation isn't included as a deduction from profits when calculating a business's value, the business will be overvalued if you use EBITDA for business valuation purposes. These assets will need to be replaced at some point in the future and by ignoring depreciation, the business will be overpriced so that when these assets need replacing in the future, the buyer of the business is effectively paying again for these assets. This problem is made worse when considering businesses which are heavily invested in plant and machinery, like businesses with a factory. Where a business has large amounts of plant and machinery, the depreciation charge will be higher, and therefore the addback will be equally as high. But then on the basis of using the profit multiply method to value a small business, with a factory and high levels of depreciation, if EBITDA is used as the profit to be multiplied in the valuation calculation, the business will be much more overpriced. If you have any questions on this topic about buying a business, about EBITDA, or on any other aspect about the process involved in buying a business, please drop a comment below. And always remember that no question is a stupid question. If you don't know it, you don't know it. And by having the answer to the question you have might be all it takes to move to the very next step in your journey to buy a business. Take care and I look forward to seeing you on my next video.